Fifth Briefing Threshold, A New Promise for Humanity In order to prepare for the alien presence that is in the world, it is necessary to learn more about life in the greater community. Life that will envelop your world in the future. Life that you will be a part of. Humanity's destiny was always to emerge into a greater community of intelligent life. This is inevitable, and occurs in all worlds where intelligent life has been seeded, and has developed. Eventually, you would have come to realize that you lived within a greater community. And eventually, you would have found that you were not alone in your own world, that visitation was occurring, and that you would have to learn to contend with divergent races, forces, beliefs, and attitudes that are prevalent in the greater community in which you live. Emerging into the greater community is your destiny. Your isolation is now over. Though your world has been visited many times in the past, your isolated state has come to an end. Now it is necessary for you to realize that you are no longer alone in the universe, or even within your own world. This understanding is presented more fully in the teaching in greater community spirituality that is being presented in the world today. Our role here is to describe life as it exists in the greater community, so that you may have a deeper understanding of the greater panorama of life into which you are emerging. This is necessary in order for you to be able to approach this new reality with greater objectivity, understanding and wisdom. Humanity has lived in relative isolation for so long that it is natural for you to consider that the rest of the universe functions according to the ideas, principles, and science that you hold sacred, and upon which you base your activities and your perceptions of the world. The greater community is vast. Its furthest reaches have never been explored. It is greater than any race can comprehend. Within this magnificent creation, intelligent life exists at all levels of evolution, and in countless expressions. Your world exists in a part of the greater community that is fairly well inhabited. There are many areas of the greater community that have never been explored, and other areas where races live in secret. Everything exists in the greater community in terms of the manifestations of life. And though life as we have been describing it seems difficult and challenging, the Creator works everywhere, reclaiming the separated through knowledge. In the greater community, there can be no one religion, one ideology, or one form of government that can be adapted to all races and all peoples. Therefore, when we speak of religion, we speak of the spirituality of knowledge, for this is the power and presence of knowledge that dwells in all intelligent life. Within you, within your visitors, and within other races that you will encounter in the future. Thus, universal spirituality becomes a great focal point. It brings together the divergent understandings and ideas that are prevalent in your world, and gives your own spiritual reality a shared foundation. Yet, the study of knowledge is not only edifying, it is essential for survival and advancement in the greater community. For you to be able to establish and sustain your freedom and independence in the greater community, you must have this greater ability developed amongst enough people in your world. Knowledge is the only part of you that cannot be manipulated or influenced. It is the source of all wise understanding and action. It becomes a necessity within a greater community environment if freedom is valued, and if you wish to establish your own destiny without being integrated into a collective, or another society. Therefore, while we present a grave situation in the world today, we also present a great gift and a great promise for humanity, for the Creator would not leave you unprepared for the greater community, which is the greatest of all thresholds that you as a race will face. We have been blessed with this gift as well. It has been in our possession for many of your centuries. We have had to learn it both out of choice and out of necessity. Indeed, it is the presence and the power of knowledge which enables us to speak as your allies and to provide the information that we are giving in these briefings. Had we never found this great revelation, we would be isolated in our own worlds, unable to comprehend the greater forces in the universe which would shape our future and our destiny. For the gift that is being given in your world today has been given to us, and to many other races as well who showed promise. This gift is especially important for emerging races such as your own who hold such promise, and yet are so vulnerable in the greater community. Therefore, while there can be no one religion or ideology in the universe, there is a universal principle, understanding, and spiritual reality that is available to all. So complete is it that it can speak to those who are vastly different from you. It speaks to the diversity of life in all of its manifestations. You, living within your world, now have the opportunity to learn of such a great reality, to experience its power and grace for yourselves. 
Indeed, ultimately this is the gift that we wish to reinforce, for this will preserve your freedom, and your self-determination, and will open the door to a greater promise in the universe. However, you have adversity and a great challenge at the outset. This requires you to learn a deeper knowledge and a greater awareness. Should you respond to this challenge, you become the beneficiary not only for yourself, but for your entire race. The teaching in greater community spirituality is being presented in the world today. It has never been presented here before. It is being given through one person, who serves as the intermediary and speaker for this tradition. It is being sent into the world at this critical time when humanity must learn of its life in the greater community, and of the greater forces that are shaping the world today. Only a teaching and understanding from beyond the world could give you this advantage, and this preparation. You are not alone in undertaking such a great task, for there are others in the universe undertaking this, even at your stage of development. You are but one of many races emerging into the greater community at this time. Each one holds promise, and yet each is vulnerable to the difficulties, challenges, and influences that exist in this greater environment. Indeed, many races have lost their freedom before it was ever attained, only to become part of collectives, or commercial guilds or client states to larger powers. We do not wish to see this happen for humanity, for this would be a great loss. It is for this reason that we are here. It is for this reason that the Creator is active in the world today, bringing a new understanding to the human family. It is time for humanity to end its ceaseless conflicts with itself, and to prepare for life in the greater community. You live in an area that has a great deal of activity beyond the sphere of your tiny solar system. Within this area, trade is carried on along certain avenues. Worlds interact, compete, and sometimes conflict with each other. Opportunities are being sought by all who have commercial interests. They seek not only resources, but also allegiances from worlds such as your own. Some are part of larger collectives. Others maintain their own alliances on a much smaller scale. Worlds that are able to emerge into the greater community successfully have had to maintain their autonomy and self-sufficiency to a great degree. This frees them from exposure to other forces which would only serve to exploit and manipulate them. It is indeed your self-sufficiency and the development of your understanding and unity that become most essential for your well-being in the future. And this future is not far off, for already the influence of the visitors is becoming greater in your world. Many individuals have acquiesced to them already, and now serve as their emissaries and intermediaries. Many other individuals simply serve as resources for their genetic program. This has happened, as we have said, many times, in many places. It is not a mystery to us, though it must seem incomprehensible to you. The intervention is both a misfortune, and a vital opportunity. If you are able to respond, if you are able to prepare, if you are able to learn greater community knowledge and wisdom, then you will be able to offset the forces that are interfering in your world, and build the foundation for greater unity amongst your own peoples and tribes. We, of course, encourage this, for this strengthens the bond of knowledge everywhere. In the greater community, warfare on a large scale rarely occurs. There are constraining forces. For one thing, warfare disturbs commerce and resource development. As a result, large nations are not allowed to act recklessly, for it impedes or offsets the goals of other parties, other nations, and other interests. Civil war occurs periodically in worlds, but large-scale warfare between societies and between worlds is rare indeed. It is partly for this reason that skill in the mental environment has been established, for nations do compete with each other, and attempt to influence one another. Since no one wants to destroy resources and opportunities, these greater skills and capabilities are cultivated with varying degrees of success amongst many societies in the greater community. When these kinds of influences are present, the need for knowledge is even greater. Humanity is ill-prepared for this. Yet because of your rich spiritual heritage, and the degree to which personal freedom exists in your world today, there is promise that you may be able to advance in this greater understanding, and thus secure your freedom and preserve it. There are other constraints against warfare in the greater community. Most trading societies belong to large guilds that have established laws and codes of conduct for their members. These serve to constrain the activities of many who would seek to use force to gain access to other worlds, and their proprietary resources. For warfare to break out on a large scale, many races would have to be involved, and this does not happen often. 
we understand that humanity is very warlike, and conceives of conflict in the greater community in terms of warfare, but in reality, you will find that this is not well tolerated, and that other avenues of persuasion are employed in place of force. Thus, your visitors come to your world not with great armaments. They do not come bringing large military forces, for they employ the skills that have served them in other ways. Skills in manipulating the thoughts, the impulses, and the feelings of those whom they encounter. Humanity is very vulnerable to such persuasions, given the degree of superstition, conflict, and mistrust that are prevalent in your world at this time. Therefore, to understand your visitors, and to understand others whom you will encounter in the future, you must establish a more mature approach to the use of power and influence. This is a vital part of your greater community education. Part of the preparation for this will be given in the teaching in greater community spirituality, but you must also learn through direct experience. At present, we understand, there is a very fanciful view of the greater community amongst many people. It is believed that those who are technologically advanced are spiritually advanced as well, yet we can assure you that this is not the case. You yourselves, though more technologically advanced now than you were previously, have not spiritually advanced to a very great degree. You have more power, but with power comes the need for greater restraint. There are those in the greater community who have far more power than you at a technological level, and even at the level of thought. You will evolve to deal with them, but weaponry will not be your focus. For warfare on an interplanetary scale is so destructive that everyone loses. What are the spoils of such a conflict? What advantages does it secure? Indeed, when such conflict does exist, it happens in space itself, and rarely in terrestrial environments. Rogue nations, and those who are destructive and aggressive are quickly countered, particularly if they exist in well-populated areas where commerce is carried on. Therefore, it is necessary for you to understand the nature of conflict in the universe, because this will give you insight into the visitors and their needs. Why they function the way they do, why individual freedom is unknown amongst them, and why they rely upon their collectives. This gives them stability and power, but it also renders them vulnerable to those who are skilled with knowledge. Knowledge enables you to think in any number of ways, to act spontaneously, to perceive reality beyond the obvious, and to experience the future and the past. Such abilities are beyond the reach of those who can only follow the regimens and the dictates of their cultures. You are far behind the visitors technologically, but you have the promise to develop skills in the way of knowledge, skills which you will need, and must learn to rely upon increasingly. We would not be the allies of humanity if we did not teach you about life in the greater community. We have seen much. We have encountered many different things. Our worlds were overcome, and we had to regain our freedom. We know, from error and from experience, the nature of the conflict, and the challenge that you face today. That is why we are well suited for this mission and our service to you. However, you will not meet us, and we will not come to meet the leaders of your nations. That is not our purpose. Indeed, you need as little interference as possible, but you do need great assistance. There are new skills that you must develop, and a new understanding that you must gain. Even a benevolent society, should they come to your world, would have such an influence, and such an impact upon you, that you would become dependent upon them, and would not establish your own strength, your own power, and your own self-sufficiency. You would be so reliant upon their technology, and upon their understanding, that they would not be able to leave you. And indeed, their arrival here would make you even more vulnerable to interference in the future. For you would desire their technology, and you would want to travel along the corridors of trade in the greater community. Yet you would not be prepared, and you would not be wise. That is why your future friends are not here. That is why they are not coming to help you. For you would not become strong if they did. You would want to associate with them, you would want to have alliances with them, but you would be so weak that you could not protect yourselves. In essence, you would become part of their culture, which they do not will. Perhaps many people will not be able to understand what we are saying here, but in time this will make perfect sense to you, and you will see its wisdom and its necessity. At this moment, you are far too frail, too distracted, and too conflicted to form strong alliances, even with those who could be your future friends. Humanity cannot yet speak as one voice, and so you are prone to intervention and manipulation from beyond. 
as the reality of the greater community becomes more well known within your world, and if our message can reach enough people, then there will be a growing consensus that there is a greater problem facing humanity. This could create a new basis for cooperation and consensus. For what possible advantage can one nation in your world have over another when the entire world is threatened by the intervention? And who could seek to gain individual power in an environment where alien forces are intervening? If freedom is to be real in your world, it must be shared. It must be recognized and known. It cannot be the privilege of the few, or there will be no real strength here. We understand from the unseen ones that already there are people who seek world dominion, because they believe they have the visitors' blessings and support. They have the visitors' assurance that they will be assisted in their quest for power. And yet, what are they giving away, but the keys to their own freedom and the freedom of their world? They are unknowing and unwise. They cannot see their error. We also understand that there are those who believe that the visitors are here to represent a spiritual renaissance, and a new hope for humanity, but how can they know, they who know nothing of the greater community? It is their hope and their desire that this be the case, and such wishes are accommodated by the visitors, for very obvious reasons. What we are saying here is there can be nothing short of real freedom in the world, real power and real unity. We make our message available to everyone, and we trust that our words can be received and considered seriously. Yet we have no control over your response. And the superstitions and the fears of the world may make our message beyond the reach for many. But the promise is still there. To give you more, we would have to take over your world, which we do not want to do. Therefore, we give all that we can give without interfering in your affairs. Yet there are many who want interference. They want to be rescued or saved by someone else. They do not trust the possibilities for humanity. They do not believe in humanity's inherent strengths and capabilities. They will give over their freedom willingly. They will believe what they are told by the visitors. And they will serve their new masters, thinking that what they are being given is their own liberation. Freedom is a precious thing in the greater community. Never forget this. Your freedom, our freedom. And what is freedom, but the ability to follow knowledge, the reality that the Creator has given you, and to express knowledge, and to contribute knowledge in all of its manifestations? Your visitors do not have this freedom. It is unknown to them. They look at the chaos of your world, and they believe that the order that they will impose here will be redeeming for you, and will save you from your own self-destruction. This is all they can give, for this is all that they have. And they will use you, but they do not consider this inappropriate, for they themselves are being used, and know of no alternative to this. Their programming, their conditioning, is so thorough, that to reach them at the level of their deeper spirituality holds only remote possibilities. You do not have the strength to do this. You would have to be so much stronger than you are today to have a redeeming influence on your visitors. And yet, their conformity is not so unusual in the greater community. It is very common in large collectives, where uniformity and compliance are essential to efficient functioning, particularly over vast areas of space. Therefore, do not look at the greater community with fear, but with objectivity. The conditions that we are describing already exist in your world. You can understand these things. Manipulation is known to you. Influence is known to you. You have just never encountered them on such a great scale, nor have you ever had to compete with other forms of intelligent life. As a result, you do not yet have the skills to do so. We speak of knowledge because it is your greatest ability. Regardless of what technology you can develop over time, knowledge is your greatest promise. You are far behind the visitors in your technological development, so you must rely upon knowledge. It is the greatest force in the universe, and your visitors do not use it. It is your only hope. That is why the teaching in greater community spirituality teaches the way of knowledge, provides the steps to knowledge and teaches greater community wisdom and insight. Without this preparation, you would not have the skill or the perspective to understand your dilemma, or to respond to it effectively. It is too big. It is too new. And you are not adapted to these new circumstances. The visitor's influence is growing with each passing day. Every person who can hear this, feel this and know this must learn the way of knowledge, the greater community way of knowledge. This is a calling. It is a gift. It is a challenge. Under more pleasant circumstances, well, the need may not seem as great. 
But the need is tremendous, for there is no security, there is no place to hide, there is no retreat in the world that is secure from the alien presence that is here. That is why there are only two choices. You can acquiesce or you can stand for your freedom. This is the great decision placed before each person. This is the great turning point. You cannot be foolish in the greater community. It is too demanding an environment. It requires excellence, commitment. Your world is too valuable. The resources here are coveted by others. The strategic position of your world is held in high regard. Even if you were living in some remote world far from any trade route, far from all commercial engagements, eventually you would be discovered by someone. That eventuality has come for you now. And it is well underway. Take heart, then. This is a time for courage, not ambivalence. The gravity of the situation facing you only confirms the importance of your life and your response, and the importance of the preparation that is being given in the world today. It is not only for your edification and advancement. It is for your protection, and your survival as well.